this is kind of like the best little example of how abstract storytelling can capture the same sort of emotions because it's like using abstract storytelling to almost tell the same story like this ball running through lines feels like a person running through a forest Um, so all I'm going to do, I'm not going to go over this whole thing. Don't worry. I know it's 9 a.m. on a Friday, but I'm just going to fly through just to hit the basics before we do our little exercise. Um, so, of course, abstract storytelling, it's a hard thing to do, as you guys know. Um, and the only thing I'm going to say about it is like there's figurative and there's abstract and I think we mostly work with figurative in our videos um, but I have been seeing a lot more abstraction going on and that's really cool um, blah 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 yada yada um, so the basics of storytelling of course you've got your people your place your plot and your purpose which seems pretty simple in figurative um, videos, but like that still applies in abstraction. And of course, like with abstract storytelling, you do have the option of kind of booting um, one or more of these um, to kind of fit your needs. Um, of course, there's ways to abstract, which are shapes which have their own intrinsic meaning um, if you choose to believe that or not. Of course, it's like the circle represents um, calm. It's like emotional, it's love. And the triangle is like a little more evil, perhaps a little harsher, um, which of course has, I don't know. I I've, I kind of tend to feel that like, you can use those to further your message, but if you're gonna show a triangle um, as your main character, I don't think anyone's gonna be like, this is up to no good. Um, but shapes are a great way to establish like horizontal line will always kind of feel like a horizon and then vertical lines will always kind of feel like you're, you're moving up or down trees, et cetera. Um, one shape, uh, one thing that I think is really important is that if you do have a shape as a character, it's not going to be sold unless you give them human movement. Um, that's usually like a bounce or like maybe it kind of like wiggles when it's afraid. Um, motion principles for those characters are always really great. Boring ball human ball line um lines another great way to show abstraction um i'll never forget coming here and i think it was katie lee and diana called this the the holy spirit line um that's always kind of stuck with me in its way that it can like uh deusic machina it can actually like be the movement in the story Here's another one. Um, type, of course, for the designers is a great way to express humanity. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I do kind of think that it applies uh, hand in hand with abstract storytelling. It's a great device. Here's a video. Um, that's just that. Y'all love visual principles. I know you do. Um, very handy. So place is another part about abstraction that I think can really up the production value in your story is that like, even though it's abstract, it's still occurring in a world. Um, so when you are creating an abstract story, even if they're like little vignettes, they still need to be cohesive. They still need to belong in the world. This GIF is great because I know it's a loop, 
but it does kind of move from a scene to a scene and it's like everything belongs there it, it's it's a place oh yeah this is really great because it's like using abstract storytelling to almost tell the same story like this ball running through lines feels like a person running through a forest um this is kind of like the best little example of how abstract storytelling can capture the same sort of emotions. This is another video we watched together. Very great. So plot is, um, I think plot's pretty uh, important. Um, this is kind of like for CDs in abstract storytelling, because I think in, and you all probably know this from story planning, when you kind of have this abstract, um, you're writing an abstract story for an, um, an abstract visual, um, it's really easy to fly either like too close to the sun where like the story no longer feels cohesive or it's really, really easy to get pulled down by gravity into telling something that's too figurative. Um, so the plot is a really important aspect of abstract storytelling because you can't rely just on visuals and visuals can't rely just um, on visuals either. Like it is, it is just as necessary. Um, Y'all know how a plot works. There's a story, another story. And then of course, rules, rules, rules. And this kind of goes along with CDs and ADs, um, trying to find that perfect middle ground. Um, and this is really important in world building, character establishment. You have to have those rules. Um, unless, of course, you are doing uh, a piece that's just chaos. It's it, your you're, shapes don't mean anything but emotion and you're just like really flying high up in that abstract world which i think it's a little bit harder to convince um our types of clients to do so creating those rules helps not only you but also the client um because this is typically out of their wheelhouse uh yeah when designing abstract stories remember kiss keep it simple stupid like that is like whenever i'm doing an abstract story and like we're kind of veering into like okay but like what if the what if the computer represents uh and you just go off and off and off and it's like it's it's an abstract story you have to keep it you have to keep it simple the visuals can be complex but the actual like mode, the actual action, the actual story, it has to be simple. And that and that is it. That is my hour long presentation smashed down into maybe five minutes. Um, and I'd love to like open it up, kind of ask any questions or maybe there are no questions or discussions and we want to hop straight into our exercise. Um, it's up to y'all. Diane is raring to go. Pierce. Um, what would you say to a client who's skeptical and you're trying to really convince them this is like the concept to go with? Like what what are the benefits other than it's cool and fun and looks really neato? Um, because that might be the only thing that they think is beneficial about it but like what are some other uh i guess storytelling clarity things that we could talk to them about i think i think abstract storytelling it kind of depends on your audience first and foremost so like if you're trying to sell something that's incredibly boring like and you know you kind of tell the the client like if they're new to this, like you're not going to want to bog them down. Like you want to keep it high level. You want to appeal to their emotional side and kind of like get them interested so that they can go to your website and be bogged down. So it's all kind of like a play to 
your audience truly. Um, and this is why abstract storytelling doesn't always work. Um, Cause it truly has to be one of those, like, you know, you want a high level video, we got a high level visual concept um, or your audience isn't going to want to watch this. Um, so like, you know, iPad baby shapes, you know, get them to your website, get them hooked so that they can, they can go there and learn more. I don't know if anyone else has any like thing to add to that. Cause it is, it is pretty, it is a fun thing to do. Some clients just are like, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I would address the way I would do it is by like addressing the concerns. So like if they don't want an abstract story, nine times out of 10, it's because they're like, well, we need characters. It needs to feel human. It needs to whatever. And so I would just address that head on by explaining to them kind of what Bitsy went through here, like where um, the way that the circle is going to move needs to feel really human. And like just kind of explaining to them like, hey, even without characters, you can still have that feel based on like how it's animated um if that is their concern now if they don't if they're not forthcoming about what their concern is and you're just kind of guessing at it i do think that's a pretty good guess and you could ask the question first like hey are you concerned about this and then address it um but you know it might be good to like pick their brain and find out what the concern is first and then try to just address that head on Diana? Oh, I would add that um, in combining with explaining the rules and the meanings of everything, um, but really emphasizing the fact that abstract storytelling like this can be some of the most universal ways to connect with an audience um, because anybody can kind of put their put their stamp on, I'm the circle. Like that's that's a very simple like, universal message compared to something that's like much more specific and it's also easier to kind of tell big complex stories um without bogging people down with too much detail yeah that's great Lindsay I think it's also like a really elegant and modern approach to storytelling in some ways and so sometimes that's a really big selling point for clients I feel like um, I also think that if they are skeptical uh, or they're just like unsure of how that works, I haven't personally done this yet, but I was thinking about about it while Bitsy was talking. Like it might be nice to just have like the beginning of the story plan is like a one sheet that kind of uh, acclimates them to the visual language that we're using. So it's like we just show the circle and the circle like we we say what the circle stands for underneath it and it just kind of have like a really quick glance so that they can get on board with the story that you're telling. That's a good idea. I really like that. And about else? Cool. Any questions, last ones? Awesome. So let us do an exercise. So um, for this exercise, we are going to take a figurative video we've already done, and we're going to re-story plan it as an abstract. Um, and for simplicity's sakes, we are going to do the San Diego Country Credit Union County. I don't know why it says con country. Country. <laughs> Sorry, strokes. Um, so I'll also say the CDs, feel free to um, edit the script if need be. Um, but High level, we're just going to redo it, abstract style. Banks send statements. SDCCU makes a statement. People before profits. 
We support nonprofits throughout Southern California, shaping lives through volunteerism, financial support, and awareness. From providing school supplies to students in need to helping our furry friends, SDCCU uplifts the communities we serve. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. We should go first since it'll be very short and sweet. Um, so I'll start at the beginning. Um, we didn't get super far, but small and mighty. Um, so we started off you know, with the bank, banks and statements. SDCCU makes a statement. Basically, we have a bunch of um, <clears throat> papers falling in, uh, just kind of making this big pile. And then it gets uh, blown away by a statement, which is our exclamation point. And therein kind of begins our uh, journey with this dot, um, this dot to be precise. So we see the exclamation point flip on its side and people first arises from it and profit second is uh, relegated to second place. Um, and then that exclamation point, well, the line of it flips around and lands on top of the, the dot of the exclamation point. And it's like this balancing thing. Uh, it was sold to us as kind of like the uh, Tobey Maguire uh, learning about his powers in the first Spider-Man. He's like, whoa, 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 uh, in the cafeteria. So all the nonprofits fall and are caught by our little Spider-Man dot. And they're all supported. And that's as far as we got. <laughs> My favorite part was watching Diana's reaction. She liked she liked me this. too. <laughs> me too. Um, we also did not get very far, but we got something. So the opening is an actual like bank letter that would come through, and then it turns into multiple of them, as we say, banks send statements, and then those kind of whoosh off screen. And then there's like this dot that hits hard as we say SDCCU makes a statement. And so it like hits hard in the center and then all these like ripple circles kind of come out of there. And then through there, you'd see all these dots that kind of represent people as we say people first. And then they kind of move away as we say profits second. And then we go into California, as we say, we support nonprofits throughout Southern California, and those are just little location markers that pop up around Southern Cal or California. And then shaping lives through volunteerism is like these two dots that are next to each other. One's kind of glowing, one's dark, and then they're both glowing after that. That's as far as we got. Noise. Okay, so bank sent statements. The statements fill the screen, these circle papers, and they fill the screen. Next frame. They fill the screen. Next frame. CDCCU makes a statement. It's a big motion line that breaks through all the papers and then like circles around the thing. And then people first, whoa, we, we center the U. And then next, the U has little people shapes and then this people first profit second and then the people shapes break apart and <laughs> become california and then all we got there so we got the people shapes california and then we were going to use the shapes to create little vignettes like this is a scene for volunteerism it's like a hand giving someone a can of food but it's like abstracted so we'd see little motions of like the shapes kind of doing things Thanks, Bitsy. This was fun. Yeah, I hope you guys have fun. So it was uh, sort of slapped together. Oh, it's it's great. It was great. This is actually a really cool little exercise. Yeah, I agree. Like that, it's a little hard because I worked on this one, <laughs> but it was like a cool little process to just like, and then even like doing the reverse, right? Like taking something that's yeah. abstract and how can we kind of change it? Like, I think this is uh, well done. Good idea. <laughs>